I'm here at Fort Tejon State Historic Park in California, and this was an original army garrison and a base that was here from 1854 until 1864. When California joined the Union on September 9, 1850, it was truly the Wild West. Prospectors from the East and around the world flocked to the region with the hopes of striking it rich, while coastal cities grew and boom towns came and went. Amidst the rush of settlers, numerous American Indian tribes in the region, who had been interacting with the Spanish for decades, struggled with the latest flood of foreigners to their land. As the population grew, so did the U.S. military presence. One strategic area at the U.S. military established a garrison was at a mountain pass once known as Portezuelo de Cortez. This ancient pathway between the mountains connects Southern California to the Central Valley and has been used for hundreds of years. Today known as Tejon Pass, its name has its origins in 1806 when Father Francisco Garces discovered a dead badger, or Tejon in Spanish, at the mouth of the canyon. By the mid-1850s, this well-established pathway served as an important route for settlers and native people. Accordingly, it was a logical location to establish a military fort there within Grapevine Canyon, particularly due to the abundance of fresh water and wood for fuel. The soldiers stationed at Fort Tejon were primarily posted there to protect and control the Indians who were living on the Sebastian Indian Reservation. Additionally, they protected those Indians and other settlers from raids carried out by other groups in the region. On August 10, 1854, Fort Tejon was officially manned by the United States Army. The fort served as the headquarters for the first United States Dragoons. The early years were largely uneventful, save the Great Earthquake of 1857, named after the fort. In July 1861, soldiers from the fort were ordered to Los Angeles in order to quell Confederate sympathizers in the city and provide a strong government presence. In 1863, California volunteer soldiers occupied Fort Tejon. Then on September 11, 1864, Fort Tejon was officially abandoned after only 10 years of service. Today, it is preserved as Fort Tejon State Park. There are two restored adobe structures, the barracks and officers' quarters from the original fort. The barracks has an outstanding museum with uniforms, artifacts, and history on the fort and the lives of the men who lived there. And here in one of the reconstructed buildings is actually a museum. It's talking all about the soldiers of Fort Tejon and what it would have been like to be garrisoned here you know, at the time, really in the middle of nowhere. And they had these life-size soldiers in uniform, of course. And it's neat just to kind of see, you know, of course, the uniforms of the 1850s into the 1860s, this is essentially what we would have seen during the American Civil War, uh, especially since this fort, you know, existed until 1864, you know, when it was abandoned. Yeah, these buildings are neat, just kind of seeing the construction what that would have been like. And here is a museum in one of the buildings that are here at Fort Tejon. And they have really a lot of neat things on display. Um, a lot of it original pieces, some of it, you know, reproductions, but it really gives you a good idea of what life was like here for the soldiers and any of the civilians that were living here at Fort Tejon in the 1850s into the 1860s. Of course, one of my favorite anytime I see firearms or sabers, I get excited. Here you have a Model 1841 uh, rifle, also known as the Mississippi rifle, 54 caliber, of course. A saber there in the back. And then here, I'll try and get a better shot on the side. You have three revolvers as well, which are just absolutely beautiful. And yeah, this is a, you know free to come in here to the museum. It's just open for people to walk in and check out, which is quite neat. And Again, a lot of uniforms, you have certain displays. This one talking a lot about the different types of headwear, you know, different forage caps. And uh, what's cool is, you know, this being from the 1850s, of course, into the 1860s, 
the uniforms really look essentially what you would see during the American Civil War. And uh, they have a lot of that on display here, talking about the different sizing system that they used in the army, what the different colors would have meant, and uh, you know, just generally what the different uniforms would have been like for cavalry, artillery, infantry, things of that nature. I'm not sure how well you can see it on here, but this is kind of a reconstructed uh, barracks and just what the life would have been like here for a soldier. You can see all the uniforms hanging on the wall. You have saddles, rifles, sabers, tables with lanterns and, and checkers and other things set up. And this is just a really cool representation to see, you know, what life might have been like for a soldier out here in the frontier in the mid 1800s. Pretty warm out today, uh, not too hot though, with being June. You hear the horns in the distance. Uh, this is just such a cool property and such a neat historic site to check out. And as you go throughout, there are these small yellow signs that kind of give you some history of the area. So this looks like this was the site of a second barracks building, which was designed to hold about 50 to 80 soldiers. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. They have a lot of these areas fenced off too to just kind of maintain the natural geography and, and plant life here. But it really is pretty, and it's kind of nestled here in this valley. And as mentioned, they have a few of these reconstructed buildings, uh, you know, similar to what you might have seen at the time. There wouldn't have been a lot here, um, but you have this building here, kind of scan around the property. And yeah, looking at that mountain range right here, you can really kind of get the sense of the, the valley that we're in. And the uh, other building that you see down here, that is where the museum is that we walked through previously. But again, it's a beautiful day here at Fort Tejon. Uh, of course, the history at that time was quite complicated with the relationship between the U.S. and the United States government and Army and the Native American populations. But it is part of our history and it's something to be studied. And just to think that not only did Fort Tejon have that, you know, kind of Western feel and Western history aspect to it, but of course its role in the American Civil War in terms of, you know, the cavalry and soldiers here being brought over to L.A. to essentially stamp out any potential con confederate sympathizers in the area is just a really interesting chapter of our, our history and associated with the civil war that a lot of people don't know about all right i'm going up into the second building here and i, I like that these buildings are just kind of open for the public to come into um, there are some staff here that can answer questions but uh, this building here would have been used as or it's representing the officers quarters and this is a representation of the parlor here at the officer's quarters. And the sign reads, quote, only think four whole rooms, end quote. That was written by Captain John W. Gardner, who happily told his parents that, describing his new quarters here at Fort Tejon. And he and his wife, Annie, whom he married just the year before, came to the fort in June 1855 and lived here for 18 months. Less than a month after their arrival, the Gardners gave a party to celebrate their first wedding anniversary. Collecting all the party foods available and using borrowed wine glasses, Mrs. Gardner served pickled oysters, soda biscuits, fruitcake, and sherry. I just missed them firing the howitzer. We'll see if they fired again, but that was pretty cool just hearing that echo throughout the valley, seeing the smoke dissipate pretty quickly here in the dry air. Today, most folks driving up and down the I-5 have no idea that Fort Tejon exists nearby. But it stands as a fascinating relic of the Old West and an interesting chapter of the American Civil War. <laughs>